to the Keystone Sports Network. Hello and welcome back to the Keystone Kickoff Show. I'm Jim Galante, along with Sean Gold. Sean is the guy who gave us all those great picks during the regular season. We've got Sean back to help us out with the college football playoffs and the rest of the New Year's Six games. How are you doing, Sean? It's been a while. Jim, it has been a while, but I'm doing good, and I'm just excited to get to make some more predictions on the show. I think it's going to be a good New Year's Six. It is. We got some interesting matchups. There's a couple of mismatches, but we'll get through all those. We've got six games to get through, so why don't we get right to it? Let's start with the game our listeners are most interested in, and that's Ole Miss and Penn State, Saturday at noon in the Peach Bowl. Penn State, the latest that I saw, Penn State is a a four-and-a-half-point favorite, and that's been growing a bit as we get closer and closer to the game. Sean, what what do you see in that one? The first thing I'd like to say about this game, and you kind of mentioned it earlier, not all these games have a ton of meaning behind them, but for both Penn State and Ole Miss, I think they really want to get a win in this bowl game. These games mean a lot for both of these programs with how their seasons have gone, and in the end, I got to say, Penn State rewarded us a lot this year. I'm going to roll with them against the spread as well. I like the way they ended their season. And for James Franklin, he takes bowl games very seriously. And I think he's going to want to go in and make a statement going into next year saying, hey, we are still a great Penn State team. And we're going to be back next year with the the Big Ten shakeup. And we need to be known that we're a, a major Big Ten program that teams are going to have to deal with moving forward. I'm with you on this one. Uh, Also, Sean, I like how they finished the season. I like how the offense finished the season. Yes, I know it was a Michigan State in that last game. But all those things that we saw as flaws during most of the season, they seem to address them. And that was very quick without having much time. Now that they have the four weeks to get ready to prepare. The other thing, as you said, both... This game means something to both Penn State and to Ole Miss, and it's reflected in neither team has been hurt that badly with guys opting out. Now, there'll be some Penn State players who play limited snaps, but most of them are going to be there. So good for both those teams. It should be a good one, but I'm with you on Penn State for that one. Next up, this one's also a Southeast Conference versus Big Ten game, and that's Missouri and Ohio State. Ohio State is a three-point favorite in this one. It's an interesting one. There'll be a few guys sitting out for Ohio State, which I think just kind of levels the playing field a bit. For Missouri, this is a chance to get a win against the top 10 team. So I'm thinking this must be pretty important to Missouri. I agree. I think Missouri really wants to go in and make a statement. They had a magical season. No one expected Missouri to be here. They haven't played in a New Year's Six Bowl in a long time. This is just another another season for Ohio State. They expected to be here. They got hit by the transfer portal. Quarterbacks, a little bit of uncertainty going into this game. I like Missouri to cap this season off, cover the spread, potentially even get a win here and upset Ohio State, but I'm, I'm big on Missouri this year. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure I have it in my heart to say that I'm, I'm, I think Ohio State will win, or at least to put my heart in earned dollars on them. But I'm not that concerned, the fact that they lost their quarterback. I'm not a big Kyle McCord guy, so I'm wondering if that that one's not just a blessing in disguise, you know, to change quarterbacks there. We'll we'll see how that one goes. I, I guess it's Devin Brown who will take over. It'll be interesting to see how he does and how the Ohio State fans respond to him. They were pretty harsh with Kyle McCord. We'll see if uh, uh, Devin Brown could respond. Next up, this one, it's fascinating for all the wrong reasons. I think it's Georgia and Florida State. Both these teams had arguments to be in the playoffs, Florida State especially, an undefeated season, ACC champs. We all know what happened there. Forgotten in all that, though, Sean, is this is a Georgia team that was a two-time defending champ undefeated through the regular season, and their only loss was to Alabama in the Southeast Conference Championship game, one could argue that Georgia is just as good as any of the four teams that are in the playoffs. Combine those two things and Florida State with so many 
players opting out. Uh, Georgia is an 18 and a half point favorite over Florida State. Interesting game. You know, I've had a bit of an emotional swing a couple times on this game. At first, when everything happened with the playoffs, I thought Georgia's going to go in and absolutely kill Florida State. And then I kind of started to think, you know what? If Florida State really wants to show that they deserve to be in the playoffs, despite Jordan Travis getting hurt and despite all the things they've had to deal with, then this is a perfect opportunity to go in and make a statement and say, hey, look, you guys disrespected us. We're going to throw it right back in your face and show we deserve to be one of those four teams. And now with all the opt-outs and just the injuries piling up, coupled with what you said about Georgia, how they're like, we were two-time defending champions. We had one loss in the best conferences championship game, and now you're putting us out of the playoff picture instead of putting Texas you know, in. I think they could have made that argument there. I'm kind of back on the Georgia train because I really do think Georgia wants to go in and say, look, we're still the Georgia Bulldogs. We're still back-to-back national champions. We have not gone anywhere, and we're going to show this FSU team what's up. So give me Georgia with the big spread. I feel bad for, for Florida State because they had a great season, and they just kind of got the wrong side of the coin flip a couple times here. But I think Georgia's going to handle business. I, I'm with you on this one. I think Florida State, just yeah. they already – at full strength, both teams, I think Florida State would be a, a a solid underdog to Georgia with all the losses uh, of players. I, they could barely put a team out there. And Georgia, a lot of times in these bowl games, Sean, I think we take emotion into play. You know, does the team want to be there or not? But I just look at Georgia as this machine mm-hmm. without emotion. They're efficient. They'll go out and just take care of business. And I think uh, Florida State, unfortunately, will the result of that is going to be Georgia really uh, boat racing them, I I think, really taking it to them. Another game that has a a large spread, it's Oregon and Liberty. And this has now become a commonplace. You have the uh, group of 16 that makes it into the New Year's Six Bowl game. And off a top, they've at least been representative, but I'm not sure that's going to be the case with this Liberty team. And Oregon, if they show up, I, I think this could be another boat racing going on here. Oregon is a 16-point favorite. What do you think? Could Liberty stick with them? Well, as you said, it comes down to if Oregon decides to show up. You just referenced Georgia as this machine that no emotion Unfortunately, that's Oregon's big knock. They let the emotions get to them way too much, and they ride on their highs, but they fall on their lows here. And my only concern for Oregon is if they're kind of coming into this game saying, oh, we should have gotten a better opponent. Why aren't we playing maybe someone like Ohio State or Penn State or Missouri, who was kind of a top 10, top 15 team, and said you're giving us liberty and kind of not giving us a great matchup in this game. If they're going to let that affect them, they can come in and not cover and potentially even lose this game because they're sitting there feeling sorry for themselves. My hope is that that's not the case. My hope is that they come in and say, hey, look, let's end this season, what's been a great season for them, on a really high note. Let's go in and crush Liberty and show everybody you you should have given us a better opponent in this game. So I am a little concerned that they're going to kind of get in their feelings a little too much about this matchup. But in the end, they're a really, really good team. They could have been a playoff team if they beat Washington. Uh So I'm going to go with Oregon to get this victory and cover the spread. I'm going Oregon also on this one, Sean. I just feel like this is a mismatch, you know, and I believe Bo Nix is still going to play for Oregon. I'm not even sure how much Oregon has to be into it to win this game. I think they're just so far superior to Liberty that, you know, this one, this one could get ugly. So I'm with you on that. I'll go Oregon. That leads us now to the playoffs. And these are, we talked about it a little bit ahead of the show, uh, Sean. I think this is as good a playoff matchup as we've seen. I could make an argument really for any of the four teams to be the ultimate winner of this thing. So I, I think there's some great matchups. The first one we'll go with is Alabama, Michigan. Michigan's the number one seed, Alabama the number four seed, and Michigan is a point and a half favorite. And I'm not, I'm not sure I would make Michigan the favorite in this game. 
Well, you know how much I've kind of loved Alabama based off of our previous episodes and how the season's gone on. But I got to say, I've said all year long, I think Michigan's the most complete and best team in the country. And it's hard to do, but I got to stick with my guns on that one. I'm going to go with Michigan. I don't love it because I really do like what Alabama's doing. And there's just something about kind of going against Nick Saban that doesn't sit well with anybody. But I do think that Michigan is the most complete team in college football. And that defense and run game, I think, is going to lead them to a victory here. And uh, it's not a big spread, so they don't have to cover by much. It, it's interesting. I'm. I just want to see the matchup. I think it could be a tremendous game. And I know with Alabama, they're a better team, a different team than they were at the beginning of the season. But this is also a team that had to have a last second prayer to beat a very average Auburn team to finish the season. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I you know, it's kind of a cliche, but I think this might be Nick Saban's best coaching job there to mm-hmm. have this team that struggled so much earlier in the season to be where they are now. I'm I, cringing a little bit, but I think I've got the Crimson Tide in that one. Next up, it's Texas, Washington. Texas is a four point favorite over Washington. Texas, of course, has that win earlier in the season against Alabama. They look great in their conference championship game. Washington just feels like they have a little magic going with them, especially with Michael Penix. How do you see that one going? Once again, just like all season long, Washington seems to be a little disrespected. What did they do to not deserve to be the favorite in this game? They're the number two team against the number three team, but they're four-point underdogs. Like, What can Washington do to say, give us our respect? I really do like this Texas team, though, and I think they're very, very good. But I got to go with Washington. Like you said, there's something magical going on with this Husky team, and I'm going to roll with them to cover the spread. I think they'll win this game. They don't even have to win it to cover, though. So I will roll the dice and go with Washington here. I'm going to go with Washington, too. The magic issue, but I also really like Michael Penix of finding a way to win. We at Penn State know he has that ability. Okay, the quick wrap-up. Penn State, Missouri, Georgia, Oregon, Michigan, and Washington are Sean's picks. Real quick, Sean, for our listeners who want to get more from Sean's take, where do they go? Yep, you can now head to seanstake.com. That's S-H-A-U-N-S-T-A-K-E.com. The website is fully revamped. Check it out. Let's get going. All right, very good. Thank you, Sean. Thank you all for listening. Have a great New Year's, and we'll see you soon. Keystone Sports Network. 